Hey guys, welcome to TJ's Tech. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you five different PCs you can build for under 15,000 in South Africa right now. Starting from 5,000, going all the way up to 15,000. For each PC, we're going to be looking for a CPU, CPU cooler, motherboard, RAM, SSD or hard drive, a GPU, a case, and a power supply. If you're looking to build a PC within the next couple of months, this video is definitely for you. So stick around till the end to see what kind of PC you can build yourself. And by the way, we just hit a thousand subscribers on the channel, which I am super grateful for. I'm just really a guy who likes gaming computers and video games. So the fact that a thousand of you decided to subscribe is pretty amazing to me. I'm going to be uploading a lot more Are regularly. You so right if you now? want to see more of my content, make sure you subscribe with the notifications to make sure you don't miss out on, on future content. But without further ado, let's get started. Starting off with a 5,000 budget. I actually did a video on this a couple of months ago where I tried to configure a PC for under 5,000, which we somewhat were able to achieve. You can check out the video on the top right hand corner if you want to see it. But my suggestion still stands from the last video. For that price, you should probably buy an Xbox. <laughs> but you can definitely do it. But getting into the actual configuration, on Woodware I found this Intel Core i3-10100F. It's a four core six thread CPU with a clock speed of 3.6 gigahertz and it's going for 1,200 about. It's a great budget CPU. It's a little bit outdated right now. We're on 14th gen, I believe, of Intel, but it's still a great CPU and it's on the LGA 1200 platform, which means you can use any 500 series or 400 series motherboard on the Intel platform. And it's a brand new CPU which means you don't really have to worry about whether it's working or not. We're going to be using the stock CPU cooler just to save a little bit of money here. But moving on to the motherboard. For the motherboard, I found a secondhand H410 motherboard on Facebook Market. The guy actually didn't give an accurate description of the motherboard or what brand it is. But for, from what I can see here, it's probably a Gigabyte H410 motherboard, as you can probably see in the picture. Of course, when buying secondhand from Facebook or or any secondhand goods website, just make sure you you, ver you verify if the seller isn't trying to scam you and actually has a product, ask for pictures, ask for, if possible, ask to test the motherboard or ask him to test the motherboard for you. But for this, for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna assume that the motherboard works and it is as described in the listing. And by the way, it's uh, 850 bucks. Moving on to the RAM. For the RAM, I found this Clevbolt XR 16 gigabyte kick of RAM. It's two eight gigabyte sticks with a clock speed of 3,600 megahertz and it's DDR4. The RAM also is brand new. As you can see, it's from the Eve Tech website. Not really much to say about this RAM. It's a perfect deal. It's 800 bucks. So we, we got a huge saving here for a kit of 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is still enough for most games and most things you do on your computer nowadays. Then moving on to the storage, I found an SSD here, a 128 gigabyte SSD. It's a Patriot SSD and it's an M.2 NVMe SSD as you can see. It's, it's Gen 3, which means it doesn't have the fastest speeds currently, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be good enough for us to have a, a speedy Windows boot and fast loading times. You're not really gonna be able to store much on this SSD, but again, this is a 5,000 budget, so we're making a lot of compromises here. So that's why I chose this one. As you can see, the price is 380 bucks, which is a huge steal if you ask me. But if you really wanted to, you would have went for a hard drive and got maybe a little bit of a larger capacity or just take a hard drive off of a of a off of broken laptop or broken computer or something that could also work for you. But assuming you want to buy it brand new, then you could just go for this one here. By the way, I'll leave a link to the to us to a spreadsheet with all these parts in the description if you want to check it out after the video, of course. But moving on to the GPU, which is probably the most important part of the PC. If you're going to be copying this build, try to aim for a GPU that costs less than 1200. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any decently performing GPU for that budget. So I just went for for a secondhand RX 470. It's an AMD GPU and, and was going for 1,800 from a Facebook listing. This guy's actually selling multiple GPUs here, but I went for the RX 470 because, because it's got eight gigabytes of VRAM. It's got eight gigabytes of VRAM, which is, which is gonna be good for gaming performance, which is gonna be good for gaming performance. And it's not too expensive from this listing that I'm seeing here. Unfortunately, this ended up resulting in a little bit above our budget but unfortunately, very hard, very hard to get parts that are gonna fit exactly your budget unless you manage to not spend money on any of the parts at all. For example, like I said previously, the SSD 
or even the case, which we're moving on to now. For the case, for the case, I believe I found a huge steal here on Eve Tech. I found this Gambius Aura GC, GC7 gaming case. It's got three pre-installed fans. It's and it looks like it could be an easy an easy case to build in. So huge steal on this one, and it's brand new, of course. And then finally, we're going to be moving on to our power supply. For the power supply, if you don't know how much exactly. Uh, the parts you're going to be using are going to consume in terms of power. You can use the Cooler Master website. They have a power supply calculator. You just plug in the parts that you're going to be using and it gives you an estimate of your of your wattage and then you can purchase a power supply from there. I estimated the, the consumption of our parts here to be 266 watts. But as you can see, this is a very low consumption consumption build. So you don't really have to worry about getting a, a really high wattage power supply. I managed to get a secondhand power supply here. It's an Antec 6, 650 watt power supply, which is more than enough for our build. And it costs 650. Interesting pricing there. Now adding up the price of all the parts we found, it adds up to 6,180, which is about 1,180 above our budget. And you're probably going to have to pay for shipping. So probably more like 1,300. I think the best way to probably get closer to our budget would have been to get a cheaper GPU, which is damn near impossible or avoid paying for, paying for the case or also avoid paying for the power supply. Anything you can avo avoid paying for, just do so and save yourself a little bit of money. Maybe you can scrape some parts from an old PC you have laying around at home or an old PC from a friend. But now let's move on to our second budget, 7,500, which is 2,500 above our previous budget. This gives us a little bit more breathing room and you'll see in the parts that we're gonna get that we managed to get even more decent parts by just increasing our budget by 2,500. We ended up sticking with the same CPU, the, the Intel Core i3-10100F, which is still a great CPU for most budget builds. And again, we're gonna be using the stock cooler as well. For the motherboard, we upgraded our motherboard to a MSI B460MA Pro. Now you might be asking, what's the difference between this motherboard and the previous motherboard from Facebook? To be honest, not much really. The only advantage that this probably has it is it probably supports higher, higher speed memory because B series motherboards usually support higher speed memory and probably supports higher clock speeds. So if you want to upgrade to a more higher end 10th gen or 11th gen CPU down the line, you can still do that. So that's really the only difference. And also ordering from, from Eve Tech will probably give you a little bit more security because I think this comes with a six month warranty. Yes, it comes with a six month warranty. So if you happen to have issues with the motherboard, with the motherboard down the line, you can always return it. But that's really it. Not much of a difference between this and the previous one. If you wanted to, you could you could stick with the previous H410 motherboard to still save a little bit of your money. Besides that, the RAM is still the same. We're still using the same Clefbolt 16 gigabyte 16 gigabytes of RAM. However, for the for the SSD, we managed to upgrade to a 512 gigabyte SSD, which is a huge upgrade from the, from the previous one. You can fit in about four and a half times more stuff. It's called the Hexame E300 512 gigabyte SSD. Re it has read speeds of up to 3 3.5 gigab gigabytes per second and write speeds of up to 1.8 gigabytes per second, which is about about two times faster than the one the SSD we saw previously. So this is a huge upgrade. And with the increase in budget, we also managed to upgrade our GPU to an RX 580, which is about 20 to 30 percent faster than the RX 470 in the previous budget. But the price is obviously higher for 2000, 2400. It's actually from the same Facebook listing we saw earlier. But yeah, huge upgrade from the previous from the previous rig. But we kept the case the same. We're going to be using the same Gambius GC7. And after calculating the estimated power consumption, I got 331 watts, which means that our 650 watt power supply is still going to be suitable to power this computer. And after summing up all our parts, we ended up with a sum of 7,549, which is perfectly into our budget. <clears throat> Moving on to a 10,000 budget, which again gives us a little bit more breathing room and allows us to upgrade our parts even more. Starting off with the CPU, finally changed our CPU from the Intel 10100 to a Ryzen 5 5500, which means we have two extra cores and four extra threads moving us up to six cores and 12 threads. The base clock of the CPU is 3.6 gigahertz. 
and can boost up to 4.2 gigahertz, which allows our, our PC to operate a little bit faster. I'm currently using the CPU in my PC and it's able to handle most tasks that I, that I throw on it. I use it for anything, anything from video editing to Excel spreadsheets to coding to pretty much anything. It can handle most stuff. So very great CPU, especially for gaming. And it's a great budget CPU as the price is 2200 which is a great steal. And obviously this means we have to change our motherboard as well. But before we talk about the motherboard, we're still gonna be sticking, to, we're still gonna be sticking with the stock cooler at this budget. You're welcome to spend a little bit more and get a tower cooler. You can get them for as little as 200, 300 bucks if you want to. But I chose to stick with the school with the stock cooler to just manage our budget. And then of course for our motherboard, we had to change to an AMD motherboard. I found here the Asus Prime B550MK motherboard. It's a great budget motherboard and it's gonna be able to handle our Ryzen 5 5500 very well. And any upgrades down the line, it also has four RAM slots. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So you're gonna have to get a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapter or just stick with ethernet, ethernet and, and wired connections. For our RAM, we did manage to upgrade not necessarily upgrade, still pretty much the same RAM, but we upgraded to the Cloud Crash XR 16 gigabyte RAM kit, which is two eight gigabyte sticks still of 3,600 megahertz RAM and it's DDR4, of course. It's really just the same RAM as before, but with added RGB. And then for the storage, we're still sticking with the same SSD, the same 512 gigabyte SSD that I showed you in the previous build. However, for the GPU, we managed to upgrade to an RX 6600, which I found on Facebook market for 3,400, which is a GPU from about two years ago. It's a great budget GPU. It can handle most of the latest titles. It's got eight, eight gigabytes of VRAM and the price here is 3,000, which is a great price here. We're gonna be using the same case, the same game disc GC7. However, you're welcome to upgrade to any other case you want because we do have some money left over here. I'm gonna give you the total just now. And I decided to stick with the same Antec 650 watt power supply. And again, if you go on the website and calculate the estimated power consumption, it's 278 watts, which means our 650 watt power supply is still more than enough. And our total here adds up to 9,849 once we add all the parts together. Next up, we're gonna be looking at a budget of 12,500. By the way, I'm just making up these budgets in my head. So you can adjust for whatever budget you have here. But in any case, we're gonna be sticking with the same Ryzen 5 5500. It's 2200, of course. And for better cooling, I decided to upgrade our, our CPU cooler to the Deepcool Gamex AG500. It's a, it's a great RGB CPU cooler. I've used it before in a previous build, but like I said, you don't really need an additional tower cooler. The, the stock cooler will do just fine, but I just added it really for the aesthetic upgrade and just in case you wanna upgrade your CPU in the future to a different, more power hungry CPU. But the price for this CPU cooler is 700. And moving on to the motherboard, still using the same motherboard, the same Asus B550MK motherboard. We're still gonna be using the same RAM, the same Clev Crash 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4 RAM costing 1000, but we managed to upgrade our SSD again to a one terabyte SSD, which is a huge upgrade in my opinion. Uh, the SSD is the Clev Crash C910 M.2 NVMe SSD. It's actually a gen 4 ssd which means it's also faster which means we're going to ha have even more faster boot times and loading times from the previous SS ssds and also of course more capacity which is double from the previous build moving on to our gpu of course naturally we had to upgrade the gpu you want to make sure every time you increase the budget first thing you upgrade is the gpu and kind of balance out the rest for the Beach GPU, we managed to upgrade to an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. It's not a significant upgrade from the RX 6600. The extra four gigabytes of VRAM is nice to have. I found this deal on Facebook for 4,500. It's an Asus Tough gaming card, which is an overbuilt cooler. So you don't really have to worry about your GPU overheating. And the seller seems to have good reviews. So I'm sure it's in great quality. But 
Moving on to our case, for any of the builds here, you don't really have to upgrade the case, but I just upgraded it for aesthetic purposes. Upgraded to the Gamdius Telos E3 mesh. I wouldn't say there's anything significantly different from the other case that I showed. So not much to say here besides that it's a great case and it looks like it's got great airflow. And that's really the most important thing here. And then going back on the Cooler Master website to estimate the power consumption, it, it's estimated to be 316 watts, which means which means we can still stick with the same 650 watt Antec power supply that we found on Facebook earlier. And of course, tallying up all the parts together, it sums up to 12,650. And then finally, moving on to our last configuration, the 15,000 PC, I believe this is the sweet spot for PC builds. If you wanna build a PC, I believe around 15,000 is where you can get a really decent performing PC that's gonna last you the next couple of years. But diving into the actual parts, Upgraded the CPU finally to a Ryzen 5 5600, which I found on Woodware for 3000. By the way, this is the non-X variant, which means it has a slightly higher base clock and boost clock. And it also has more L2 and L3 cache than the Ryzen 5 5500. Still the same number of cores. It's, got, it's six, six cores and 12 threads. It's going to be slightly better for gaming performance. We're going to be sticking with the same, same tower cooler. Not that we really need it. The stock cooler is still gonna be more than enough for the CPU, but nonetheless, we're still gonna be using the same Dcool AG500 for 700. Also, we're gonna be still using the same Asus Prime B550MK motherboard for 1,700, but we managed to upgrade our RAM to a kit of 32 gigabytes, which in my opinion is a little overkill. You don't really have to buy 32 gigabytes of RAM unless you're going to be doing a lot of video editing or spamming a lot of Chrome tabs or installing a bunch of apps and running them all at the same time on your computer. 16 gigabytes works perfectly for me. I'm still on a 16 gigabyte system. However, it doesn't hurt to have more gigabytes. The more the better, I guess. In a way, this is a little bit of a downgrade because it's non-RGB, but still pretty much the same speed. You're welcome to choose any other kit of RGB RAM that you want to, as long as it's 16 gigabytes and around about the same speed and DDR4 so that it is compatible with your motherboard. For the SSD, still gonna be using the same one terabyte SSD for 1,100. It's amazing how SSD prices have dropped lately. You can get you can get a decent capacity SSD nowadays for around 1000, which is good. And then moving on to the GPU, of course, there's really a lot of options you can choose at, at around this budget. We upgraded to an RX 6700 XT, which is a significant upgrade from the 3060. I think it's about 20 to 15, 20% faster than the RTX 3060. Unless you turn on ray tracing, then <laughs> it's an equal playing field. I found it on a Facebook listing here for 5,500. You're welcome to choose any other GPU you want. Just make sure it's around the price of 5,500. Anywhere between 5,000 and 6,000 will suit perfectly into your budget. For example, I found a RTX 3060 Ti also on Facebook for 5,000. You can also buy a brand new RTX 4060 for about 6,700, which is a little bit above 6,000, but you can still kind of squeeze it in. And I also found an RX 6800, non-XT by the way, for 6,700, also on Facebook market. So you're welcome to choose any other one of those. Again, I'll leave a link to a spreadsheet with all the parts that I mentioned in the description if you wanna check out any of the parts for yourself and maybe buy them. Going back to the PC case, I sort of kind of upgraded to the Deepcool CC560. Not really a significant upgrade from the other PC cases. You can still choose any of the previous ones. I just chose this one because it looked like a better quality case and it's a little bit bigger and it's got more fans and it just looks like it's it has better build quality and it's going for 900. And then estimating our power consumption on the Cooler Master website, it says 376 watts which means you're welcome to still use the same 650 watt power supply, which has been carrying us this whole time. But I just got decided to upgrade to a brand new power supply from Cooler Master actually, which is the Cooler Master Elite N700, which is a 700 watt power supply that's going for 999 or 1000 rather, which means if we sum up all our parts, it adds up to 15,399, which is also 
right on the money. In the next video, I'm gonna be looking at more mid-range to high-end PC builds. Once it's up, it's gonna be on your screen right now. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can click any of the videos on your screen right now and I'll see you there.